CCU Orlando and Aikens Counseling Center present The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly show featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 27, Forgive, Release, Let Go, Move On. And now, your host, Rev. Cynthia Alice Anderson. Welcome back, friends. I'm Cynthia Alice, and I am the host of Authentic Spiritual Journey, and I'm here in 818 Studios with my very talented producer. Hey, this is Dave Croft. What is going on, everybody? Hope you had a great Christmas now that the uh, Christmas event is over. Now we move on towards uh, New Year's, New Year's Eve. Right. The best is yet to be, friends, because, boy, for so many people, 2018 was a really tough year, and... I don't know about you all, but I'm ready to forgive, release, let go, move on. And that is exactly today's title. And the reason I'm saying uh, uh, all of this, friends, is because we are here to support you on the spiritual journey. This show is just that. It's a a show about um, our own individual spiritual journeys, and it's also... Um, for you to be to feel supported, to feel lifted, and they're just spiritual conversations. So we invite you into those, knowing that as we share our story, you're connecting in with us with your story because with all one humanity. So we bless you and thank you for joining us today. So did you, did you have a good Christmas? Oh, mine was pretty good. Yeah, I mean it's always really busy and it's always totally abundant. So um, and this year we really reached out and did a lot for others, which felt really really right. good too. Yeah, we had uh, Shannon's sister came into town and mm. that was good good having uh having some family in town for my birthday because you know as, as a kid having a birthday after christmas like on the 28th i think we've talked about this before but, yeah that's uh, but yeah it's good having some family around so yeah it was good, good yeah cr- always good christmas good. Well, yeah but also mo- little little kids you know shannon and i yeah. were you know we're up there we've been married almost 25 years and so christmas is and no kids christmas is somewhat of a non-event if, that, yeah. if that's okay yeah, to say yeah, but sure but when you have a little kid man Everything changes. Oh, yes. Christmas is magical again. So, so that that was cool. Oh. Yes, I know. With our son, that's that's the most fun too, because there were some really thoughtful and special gifts that we all got to um, enjoy and appreciate through him and through his eyes. Wow. Yeah, and so that's uh, that's always a lot of fun. And we love to drive around and look at lights and all that. So we did yeah. that many times throughout. Uh, yeah, we did that Christmas Eve. We took the top down on the Beetle, and oh, yeah. uh, we had our sleigh ride. Yeah. We do it every year. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and of course, church is always good. You know, we always share in all the Christmas services. And even tonight, there is also a service. Yeah, the at New Year's Eve service. CCU Orlando, it's our burning bowl service. And I jokingly say it's kind of pagan because of all the burning <laughs> of things. Uh, but, you know, friends, it's all one journey, all one God, uh, pagan or Christian. Ultimately, we're honoring the divine energy. And what we do at the service this evening is we are releasing... Uh, well, there's a first of all, there's a journaling writing process that's a part of the um, that's a part of the experience, and um, there's even a receiving of good news from God, and then there's at the very very end we uh, take whatever we journaled that we want to release from the year, and we release that into the fire, and that is a wonderful wonderful experience. Many, yeah. many of us don't know if we're crying or laughing right. at that point because we're happy to release it. And on the other hand, we're we're ready to move forward, too. And what, what time is that? Is that service? 7 p.m. tonight. Seven, that is 7 p.m. Eastern. What, do, do we know if that will be streamed? We will live stream that okay, as so well. If you, if you are listening to this podcast, because this uh, this went out in the morning, on, on the Monday morning, uh, if you're in the Orlando, uh, greater Orlando area, you can join us at 771 Holden Avenue up in Orlando. You can call yep. for directions at 407. 407- 7852-3940, or you can catch us live at ChristChurchUnity.net. Yes, we found out recently we are um, really connecting with people all over the world, and it really makes me honestly feel better about humanity because it's been a tough year. Some of the things I've seen uh, politically, socially, um, are just have been... Uh, uh, have saddened me, really, for lack of a better word. I'm not fearful, um, but I've been sad. And and just seeing that there are people all over the world that believe what we believe, that we are all one, that God is within all of us, and that we are on this soul journey together, that really, really inspires me. We have people in Australia, in China, in Canada, of course, all over over North America in general. 
South America. We have people in Afghanistan, in mm-hmm. Iraq. So we just bless you all uh, on the journey. Uh, a, a friend recently who was stationed in Korea also. So thank you for joining us in whatever way uh, that you do and you can, because it really lifts us up to know that what we're doing matters that deeply to you, that you are uh, joining us from afar. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, so, so today is... Uh, forgive, release, let go, and move on. Now, is, is this kind of an extension of the bur- burning bowl idea that we're going to be doing tonight? Yes. And I, and I, uh, if you do attend CC Orlando or join us online, this will do nothing but support your um, participation in it, because especially if you're new to the idea. So basically, the idea of the burning bowl service and of the show today is that when we hold on to things that are... Um, Toxic energy, for lack of a better word. Let's say we're holding unforgiveness or resentment against another. Uh, even even small experiences that we've had that have brought us pain or discomfort, and I'll even use the word trauma. Um, what we don't realize is that over time, as we hold on to these things, even though they're on the emotional uh, realm, that they have impact on certainly on the spiritual realm, certainly on the emotional realm, but even in the outer world. They also impact our overall feeling tone in our lives. That's a real important um, aspect and and a thing I don't talk about a lot, but it is very true. And I just had a conversation with a friend recently about is that unforgiveness also directly affects debt. So for so many of us, uh, financial issues are, are a problem and they're literally related to your emotional and spiritual health. So we're going to get to some of those things today, and I just want to encourage you, especially if these ideas are new, please wait to suspend judgment if you can um, as you listen to the show, because our goal in this show always is to share our journey, again, to support you, to lift you up, and we're going to talk about some ways um, that you can make positive changes in your life. So today's title is Forgive, Release, Let Go, Move On. And if you're driving or listening to this where you may don't have, maybe you don't have access to a pen or pencil or anything, remember all of the notes and the videos and links that we talk about in today's show can be found in our show notes at experienceofthesoul.com. I want to tell you too, our show notes are good. I've looked at other podcasts and they're not nearly as professional. And <laughs> well, we've got video. I mean, we've we got have... video. We're doing it all, friends. Yeah. Uh, we are so committed to bringing you a quality product. The sound, uh, the work that Dave does as our uh, engineer and producer is just um, amazing. I, I was listening to a show the other day on NPR and our sound is just as good. And um, so anyway, we appreciate that. <laughs> well, thank and, you. I appreciate it. You know, I listened to, uh, to NPR. When we, when we started yes. talking about the show, I, I brought in audio files from NPR, and yeah. of course they have, you know, they have perfectly treated. They're, they're, they they have almost copyrighted that NPR sound, but yes, it's true. Yeah. And and we've got our own sound, that's right. And we're proud of it. So I hope friends, you appreciate that because I've gone on online recently and I've, I've subscribed to different podcasts and the quality we're bringing is, is right up there. And we're proud of that. Yeah. It's, it's hit and miss. Let's just say it's hit and miss. Well, okay. Yeah. It's hit and miss. Well, (laughs) we get better as we go. That's right. And and, and like today, our video, you know, we've got, we've got a whole new video set up. Right. Um, I'm trying something new. Yep. Trying something new. And Dave is supportive because I'm forgiving, releasing, let go and moving on from last year's idea. Yeah, so we, we started 2019 a little early um, by starting this today, but um, I feel the new energy is already coming in, and this is what we want. So the new energy wants to come in. The older old energy, we often say, the old energy is wanting to be released, desires to be released. We yeah, desire and, to release it. Yeah, and it's it's really it's it's so it's so funny that that, uh, that you said that because when when we were talking about you know setting up the new setup with a little backdrop and everything uh, in my mind we weren't releasing it. This was this was just something new to try. But you know I think I think you're right. It, it's yeah. it's kind of it signals just a, a new a new tangent. You know we're we're mm. we're going in the same direction, but maybe you know off of not off, but we we've changed a few degrees. I don't know. Yeah, I, and my prayer always is to um, to grow to a to develop, to evolve. And to do that, we have to let go of what is. And there's there's uh, an aspect of the journey where you love what is, right? You, you, you get to a certain spot, you love where you are, and then something happens. And I think the first person I ever heard 
uh, talk about this process in this way was Mary Mannon Morrissey. Uh, she has a book, uh, Building Your Field of Dreams. But the, the statement she used was divine discontent. And I want to give her credit for that because that's a great phrase, divine discontent. And that's what happens when uh, our soul is, is desiring to grow. There's more we want to do. We're not even sure what it is, but what we're doing right now is no longer satisfying our soul's need. Well, desire is within every soul and the desire to not to have more friends. So hear that. But the desire to be more is what moves us forward on the journey. It, desire is very, very important on the soul journey. We, we spoke about it, I don't know, two or three shows ago and a little bit in terms of desire moving us forward. And uh, Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, said it this way, desire is the onward impulse of the ever-evolving soul. Desire is the onward impulse of the ever-evolving soul. And when we say desire, we're meaning a higher desire to be more. Again, not to have more, but to be more. And then the lower desires get transformed. Um, I want to differentiate the words I'm using here, lower desire, higher desire. When we speak of lower desire, uh, it, 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 this is a great instance, I, I think, to discuss. Uh, many of you know I am in Al-Anon as a recovery program, and a lot of my friends and colleagues are in AA, right? The, the fellowship started by Bill Wilson. Or as we lovingly call him, Bill W. Okay, but, what, what's the difference between Al Anon and AA? I'm sorry for, yeah, yeah, no, for being. Yeah, no, no. Oh. AA, and we should put this in the notes too. Yep. AA is stands for Alcoholics Anonymous, mm -hmm. and it's the program for people who uh, have a problem with alcohol. In other words, but Al Anon is for for those who love them. Gotcha. Right. So. So for their support network. Right. So, uh, for instance, uh, when I grew up my, in my home, my dad was the alcoholic, and my mom. And all of us around him were the codependent. That's what happens is the family system starts to work around the addict. But the thing is, it's not just the one in addiction that's that needs work, help, and attention. It's, it's a family system problem because what happens is those around the addict then start to shift, change, move, and not speak up, walk on eggshells because they don't want to, you know, upset the apple cart. So the problem of the person in Al-Anon is codependence. It's like addiction gotcha. to approval. The in the person in AA is the addiction to the substance. Gotcha. All right. Thank thank you. I, it's yeah. something I I had meant to ask and and uh, it's always it's, it's a good it's, differentiation. Yeah. Yeah. Good right. clarification. Thank you. So when we're talking about lower desires, to get back to that, when we're talking about lower desires, what we're meaning is that, for instance, um You've heard me say, even in this show, you know, desire moves us forward. Well, you might say, well, how does that relate to an alcoholic? Well, if an alcoholic desires a drink, that's obviously a lower desire because the alcoholic can't have one drink. The alcoholic begins to drink and drinks to the point of a blackout or annihilation. I mean, the, you know, the self destruction. Yeah, self destruction. You know, the pattern we hear about in AA and Al Anon is jails, institutions, death. That that's kind of the the way. So so that's a lower desire because it's not gonna take you anywhere on the soul journey. It's the lower desire because it's from the human level, not the spiritual level. Ultimately, anybody drinks or uses simply to cover emotional pain anyway. So when somebody gets sober, then they are left with all the emotions that they were you know, covering up to to drink and you, uh, you know, from from history. So they drink, they use, they check out. So this this type of desire obviously is a lower desire. But if they decide not to drink, well, that's moving them into higher desire because they'd rather deal with the pain and the emotional issues. In other words, they'd rather heal than check out. So the higher desire is um, is to be well. The lower desire is to satisfy that need, right? To satisfy that human need. So I hope this is making sense, friends, that when you, if you're in the program and you do not drink, you move that desire into the higher realm. And um, there was a, a famous psychologist, her name was Marion Woodman, and she had this phrase uh, talking about um, talking about lower desire and higher desire. And what she would say is when we would have this lower desire and not move into, um, say, answering that 
desire, like the alcoholic wanting a drink, then something new can come forth and the lower desire gets transformed. So when I'm speaking of, I said all that to say, when I'm speaking of desire on the soul journey, moving us forward, I'm speaking of the higher desire, the higher desire to learn, to grow, to heal, to evolve. And these are all states of being. Now, uh, desire also can be in the physical realm. And I think we talked about that a little bit. Like, I remember um, I was listening to a show several shows ago, and I thought I should have shared this story. Um, I remember uh, I was looking to buy a new vehicle, and I had always wanted a new truck. Now, I've had uh, plenty of used trucks. I've had a 76 Chevy with headers. <laughs> I've had a Toyota, two Toyotas. I've had a Nissan. And those were all cool in their own way. I mean, one was a total beater, but I loved it. And But my sole desire, I, I, I was riding horses at the time, and I thought, I need a truck to for a trailer to carry my horse. And boy, I had always wanted that truck. And at the same time, I was working with the concept spiritually of live big. So this desire for a vehicle, a large vehicle, really was important for me to answer. So even though it was something I received, it's like the desire had lived in me a long time and nobody was going to get hurt by me having a truck, you know? So I really checked it out with spirit because I was like, well, I I don't want to just get something, but it was like, it was important aspect of me taking on this larger consciousness that I deserve and that it's okay for me to live my big life. And I've driven that truck. Yeah. That, that's a that's a big truck. I'm a big dude. That's a big truck. <laughs> I know. One woman at the church who, who I love said, I think that truck's a little big for you. I said, bless you. <laughs> You're wrong, but bless you. <laughs> yes. And that might be true for her that it is yeah. too big for me, but it is not true for me. So uh, it was like allowing myself um, something and something new because I've always bought older vehicles. Um, that felt really, really important. Like new off the lot, you put yep. you, you put the All early the miles. miles. Right. Wow. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I, I, I've only bought one other new car my whole life. Uh, well, for one thing, it's it's just more financial. It makes more financial sense to buy a used car, but it, it felt um, like a prosperity statement um, to do that. And it was a real interesting spiritual process because um, right as I was going to go buy it at the church, there was, um, I took a pay cut Mm -hmm. and I had never taken a pay cut. My, my income had only ever gone up and I took it and it was my idea. It was completely voluntary. I just felt like the church could not afford what I was making. And so I gave myself a huge pay cut and my friend said, well, what about your truck? I said, well, what about it? And, and he said, well, aren't you, are you still going to buy it? I said, God is my source, not the church. And during that time, and I, it was about six months, I think, that I was on that pay cut. I made more money than when I was working, than when I was at my full pay for the church. Wow. So the universe was saying, yes, you can live big. Yes, I support you. Yes, this is the right direction to go. And all of that was, you know, trust for me. So even though it was a physical thing, it was a huge important part of my spiritual process. And it was a huge desire. So I'm saying all that. I I don't know how I got so deep in desire other than we want to make sure that what we desire is moving forward in consciousness, moving forward on the soul journey. So we want to see this year, what do we need to forgive? What do we need to release? What do we need to let go of so we can move on? Um, the the title of the show was almost a joke. Forgive, release, let go, move on. But it's not a joke at all. Mm. G- g- circle back around to how forgiveness and debt, how, how that, how those are kind of inter intertwined. Yeah, the forgiveness and debt thing is really huge. And um, as I as I mentioned, I was just talking to a pretty new friend earlier today about it, and the. The first person I ever heard talk about that, first of all, I want to give credit to Ed Wein, was Ed Wein Gaines, an incredible prosperity teacher and minister uh, I've known for 20 plus years. Ed Wein was the first one to say it. And when I began practicing the principle of tithing and daily forgiveness work, what I started to see was a, like, I've never had a lot of debt. I'm not like the type that, you know, where I had 
twelve thousand in credit card debt and ten thousand or forty thousand in student loans. I've never had that much debt, but it was too much for me. It was like you know over the two thousand mark scared me. Mm. It's like this is this is not cool. So as I started forgiving and tithing, it was really interesting. More money was going out, but my debt was was going down. And so what I what I realized about debt is that it's like it's like unforgiveness, right? Something is owed. So if I'm holding thoughts of you owe me to to you, I mean, I'm I'm pointing at my producer who no, you're, owes me no, nothing. You're fine, yeah. <laughs> but but if I say you owe me, you see, I'm holding thoughts of debt. Gotcha. Yep. And so I was done wrong. You owe me. That is the consciousness of debt owing. Yeah, and we, uh, I think we we talked about on the show before how when I left a, a job yeah. in North Carolina, yeah. you know, he still owed me ten thousand dollars, and mm. I had said um, I forgiven him, but you know, he still owes me that. You know, <laughs> yeah. he still owes me ten thousand dollars, but I've forgiven him. And right. the my uh, my mentor at the time, you know, looked me straight in the face and said, "Have you have you really <laughs> forgiven him?" No, I hadn't. I, I'd forgiven him for. The slight, yes. you know, the yes. uh, the emotional mm-hmm. impact, mm-hmm. but in my mind, he still owed me owed me that money, and it wasn't until yeah. I released him of that. Yeah, uh, and it's not like I called him up and said, "Hey, Joe, never mind about the ten grand." I just in my in my spirit, I I, yeah. I released that, and uh, yeah, it was it was freeing, not to sound cheesy and cliche, but you it know, is it was, very freeing. Yeah. It is very freeing. And, and that's what we begin to see, you know, as we do more release work. Um, we'll talk about that more too, uh, after the break in a minute, we want to get into the nuts and bolts of it, but this is an introduction. We want to release, we want to forgive, we want to let go because we do move into more freedom. And again, freedom to do what we're here to do. When we're holding on to the to the grief of the past or the, I almost said sins of the past, um, or people that have harmed us, as long as we're holding on to that, the good that God has for us cannot come forward. Why? Because we have too much we're carrying along with us. So we'll uh, do a little more right after this break. We'll return to the program in just a few moments. But first, we wanted to give a special word of thanks to our podcast partner, CCU Orlando who has helped make this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey possible. Christ Church Unity is a welcoming community dedicated to transforming lives, celebrating diversity, and supporting soul growth. CCU Orlando is located at 771 Holden Avenue in Orlando, Florida, with Sunday services at 9 and 11 a.m. You can stream services live online as well as learn more at ChristChurchUnity.net. We would also like to extend our thanks to our podcast partner, Aikens Counseling Center. Cassandra Aikens is a licensed mental health counselor dedicated to creating sacred space where clients can explore their own inner process in a safe, non-judgmental, and supportive environment. She works with individuals, couples, and groups who are seeking to live a more authentic life. Aikens Counseling Center is located in Winter Park, Florida, and can be found on the web at CassandraAikens.com. We now return you to this week's episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey. Forgive, release, let go, move on. Thank you for coming back with us. What we need to remember and to realize is on the journey, the things we hold on to keep us from moving forward. Anger, resentments, bad feelings, feeling people owe us, even when they may, as they've shared right before right before the break, that living from these ideas of forgiveness and release, first of all, I want to say that this is not a single process that's done once and then life is glorious and this utopian uh, uh, reality happens. Forgiveness, release, uh, letting go of the pains of the past is a way of life and is necessary to move forward. So I've said that several times and I want to back that up because and with a little I want to back that up with a little explanation. So forgiveness, release and letting go. So for many of us, especially if we experienced trauma as a child, which everyone did, we're all dealing with that. Then we have the normal everyday life that we're we're dealing with now. 
these things build up uh, emotionally, and most of us just kind of power through. It's like, well, I can't deal with that right now, so I'm just going to you know, power through and go into the next thing. Uh, nothing wrong with that ultimately, except if you haven't checked in with yourself, those things, are, again, are building up and becoming the feeling tone of your life. So this, this day, the 31st of, of December, is a wonderful, wonderful time to take a break, to take stock, to get a little time, to journal, to rest, to see what wants to be released. There might be some things hurt to the past that honestly, you're not ready to release yet. Uh, and we don't want to force our process either. But as you take stock, you, you might need to get out your journal. You might need to spend some quiet time, even listen to some nice, soothing piano music. Uh, you might try Shannon Croft CD. Uh, so listen to some soothing piano music. You want to, you know, kind of power down and see what comes forward for you. It might be something that happened a week ago that you forgot. It might be something that comes forward six months ago, six years ago, 60 years ago. So uh, it's important to be in relationship with that because emotionally, spiritually, um, your soul knows exactly what to do, when and how to do it. So as we take time to, to rest, to listen, to process a little bit, it's like your soul has this, the, not it's like your soul has a divine intelligence that will tell you exactly what you're ready to release. And then you don't have to overthink it. You just make a list and write it down. If you, and if you can't be at our services this evening, you can do this on your own. And, and what I've done many years, because I always do mine before the service, because I'm usually giving the service, mm -hmm. I always write it down, uh, make a list, and I just go into a time of meditation. I don't think about it. I ask spirit to show me what is it I need to release from the year. And it can be anything. It could be something uh, political. It could be something with my, my, my family of origin. It could even be something with my child, because I want to release any negativity there so that our relationship can continue to grow or develop. It could be with my spouse, my parents, even one of my parents who's been passed, my dad has passed on. It could even be with somebody who's passed on that is something I'm still holding that needs to be released, which would not only serve my soul, you know, but theirs as well. Right, because that's, ultimately, it's not for them. Correct. You know, it's, it's, it's for you. And so if they're passed on, then... And they, they might not ever hear you physically say, mm. I've, I've forgiven you, um, and, I've, and I've released that, but, uh, but it's for you. Yes. Ultimately, forgiveness, as I teach it, and I sometimes forget to say this, so um, as I grew up in the church, I heard of forgiveness as really condoning bad behavior. You know, everything from, oh, your husband's beating you, oh, just forgive him, you know. Uh, maybe eventually, once you're out, yeah, but... but the idea of forgiveness as condoning bad behavior is is not what we mean when we are talking about forgiveness. Um, when I speak of forgiveness, I'm meaning of giving away, in other words, giving to God the hurt, the pain, the toxic energy that I've been carrying. Because when I go through a trauma or a tough situation with a friend or coworker, whatever level of... of um, um, anger, resentment, I'm holding about that or hurt, then that trauma gets carried as the feeling tone of my life, and it's my reaction to what happened. The person who might have brought that into my life has their own issue with that. So they're dealing with, they've got, uh, as one of my friends likes to say, that's their own karma. Mm -hmm. You know, that, actually, their yard. <laughs> actually, he says, uh, not my circus, not my monkeys, but, but, <laughs> But but the idea is that that's theirs to deal with. But I am responsible for the growth and evolution of my own soul. So even if someone hurt me, if I hold on to the pain, if I hold on to the hurt as if it's still happening today, then I am letting something that happened maybe weeks ago or maybe even years ago still have a negative impact on my life. So the choice to forgive ultimately serves me. And it ultimately, it will ultimately serve that soul, but not in the way that you think. It doesn't condone bad behavior. It actually gives it back to where it came from. 
So rather than accepting the hurt, rather than um, carrying around the hurt as if it's still happening today, when we forgive, we give it back you know, to its original source, and that's where it belongs, and God takes it for us. So forgiveness is a very, very big key to working the spiritual journey, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. It's easier said than done, but... <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Catherine Ponder uh, writes a lot on forgiveness as well, and um, she's a great prosperity teacher also. And she, I, I believe she also says uh, unforgiveness is tied to debt as well. I'm going to have to look that up. But uh, one of the things she did with the word forgive is she broke it down and says the word forgive is to give for. So you give the toxic energy for love and acceptance and ultimately love and acceptance of yourself, love and acceptance of life's path and life's journey. So friends, forgiveness is very, very powerful and will really support your growth and evolution. And remember that it is not necessarily a one-time process, but maybe in certain situations. The, the, um, One of the uh, processes I, well, I heard a description actually of, it was of recovery, but applies to to forgiveness. The statement was, it's a new layer of the onion, you know, and so sometimes we forgive and then a year later we need to forgive again. So we just keep releasing, keep releasing, um, letting our consciousness know, letting the universe know that we want to live from this freer place, that we want to live from a place of love, of acceptance, of joy, of freedom. Um, to move into what we're supposed to do. So and I think it's important to keep in mind, at least what I believe is if you find yourself having to revisit that forgiveness, that doesn't mean that you botched it earlier. You know what I yes. mean? It's, it's not like, it's not like you did a lousy job of forgetting, forgiving. Yeah. So therefore you obviously have to forgive again. It's, it's, I mean, some of these hurts are, are deep. You yes, know? they are, and uh, you yes. can you can stitch it up, and the mm-hmm. skin might might it might be covered up, but but the, 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 that's still fusing underneath the surface. Well, that's it's, interesting. You use that image because um, that's exactly what forgiveness is like. Uh, I I talked to a friend of mine though, who's a medical doctor. This is a couple of years ago. She's a, an ER doc, and really is a really neat soul. She's worked in a lot a variety of different circumstances. And she was talking to me about how a bone heals. And actually, I called her because I said, I I just am trying to find a spiritual correlation, you know, to when we go through wounds, say, of the soul, that, you know, traumatic experiences from times past. And she talked to me a little bit about the way it heals and that and the the callousing over that kind of happens on a bone. And that actually because I had broken a wrist, you know, in school, and I was asking her about it. This wrist is actually stronger. The way it grows back, it grows back stronger. Than it was originally. Than it was originally. So I believe that's the same as the forgiveness process. Yeah. That we, and it does sometimes take many settings, you know, if you were yeah, setting an yeah. arm. Uh, as a matter of fact, mine had to be set twice um, because I was too active with the first cast. Yeah, and th- there you go. It's like if, yeah. if, 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 if you find yourself revisiting forgiveness, it might be that you've put yourself back into a situation yeah. which brings all that back up. For, for example, if... Um, you know, if let's say one of your bosses has wronged you or something, and you've yes. forgiven your boss, yes, and uh, but you you know you find yourself back at work, mm. and you're into that situation again, yes. You know, like let's say that well, we don't have to conjure up a well, hypothetical, no, but well, well, I want to talk about that too because you said a couple important things, something earlier too, when you said just because you revisit it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Again, because of the layers of the onion, sometimes there's different layers. The other thing to look at, though, like you're saying, if something does keep coming up, um, again, it's not wrong, but the reason we look at it is so um, this is, it could be a big lesson that your soul needs to heal this lifetime. Right. You know, some of us are just here to heal certain aspects of the soul journey. Um just like I've talked about, some people manifest things really easily. Like I have a friend, he manifests trips to Europe like I manifest musical instruments. <laughs> I just think about an instrument and one arrives at my door. It's the strangest thing, right? Same thing in terms of our soul, what it needs to work on. So um, 
you know, I have very specific things I'm working on this lifetime. And it'll be totally different day than what you're working mm-hmm. on. So when they come up and if it comes up regularly, we do want to ask one, did I call this back in, into my, into my, um, say in, environment unconsciously? And is there more here for me to heal? And if you are, and it's causing you pain, well then there's no reason to shame yourself. You just do the work then. Right. Yeah, you just and, do and the that work. can that can be removing yourself from a situation. Yes. It could be a toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. It could be evaluating your part in it and saying, "Okay, I, I need to, I need to kind of reset." But um, but that that those are different forms of kind of moving on. Yes, correct. And and I also want to mention you mentioned this a little bit. Um, sometimes we need to move on. Uh, forgiveness in my uh, teaching does not necessarily mean reconciliation. Hmm. Forgiveness can mean can mean a reconciliation. You know, if uh, something happens between you and somebody you love, somebody says something they don't mean, or you know, whatever. Well, that's a forgiveness, and and you and you move on together. But sometimes there is a release of the relationship mm-hmm. because it is harmful to you in some you know way that you you really can't live with. Yeah, or if that that thing that you needed to forgive that person for keeps happening, keeps happening. even though you forgive them, then you go back and. Yeah, at, at one point it almost it's on you, right? At, at some point, if this behavior is going to keep happening, then uh, at some point you have the the personal responsibility to um, yeah. to remove yourself from the situation. Is, is that yes, okay to say? It, yes, exactly, and that's part of release. Not because like weird victim blaming kind of thing, but not just, at all, not at all. But um, forgiveness and release are so close re- related because you can release a relationship but not forgive them. Right. And so forgive and re- forgiveness and release are two separate aspects, you know, virtually of the same spiritual law, because you can forgive um, and you may or may not release, say, that relationship. Um, but release is very often a pretty big shift. Uh, you know, we one of our first shows, I think, was about uh, cleaning out the closets. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking about releasing physical things. But every release that you do affects every other level of your life. So if you're releasing on the emotional, spiritual level, that will impact your career. It will impact your other relationships. It could even impact your income, as, I, as I'm talking about. So um, releasing of the past, uh, you know, forgiving uh, ways you've been harmed. And again, part of release before moving into a new year, I would uh, uh, spend some time looking around. I mean, you probably got a lot of great stuff for Christmas, does do the other things that you have in your home need to go to where somebody else needs them? So, I would uh, on a day like the thirty first every year. I I am uh, always going through what needs to be released, what needs to move on, you know, so that I can move into more of what I'm supposed to be. Yeah, and it's not like there's there's necessarily anything magical about the thirty first, you know. Right, right. It's just it's it's a it's a good time to. There's a lot of mm-hmm. energy in the world about people. You know, either wanting to better themselves or people people are prime for change yes. at this time of year. Just like they're prime for something magical happening around Christmas time, and we, we, which yes. we talked in a previous show. There's just energy there, so mm. why not tap into that energy? Yes, exactly. The universe is supporting us on this day in particular in releasing the old before bringing in the new. And and again, our whole lives are built on spiritual consciousness, and this is probably a good thing to, to end with. I, I really want to leave you with this, particularly on the 31st, because as Dave said, there is a particular energy coming in that we want to you know, have support our growth and evolution. The reason we forgive and release and let go on this particular day is that before we move into the new year, we're saying to the universe, this is how I want my new year to be. And we're saying it to ourselves also. But if in the new year we take on the old habits that we've just released, we are not going to be able to move into this new energy that we want. So I want to encourage you, if you do this forgiveness and release, the letting go of both emotional, you know, spiritual, physical things, that in the new year, you continue holding this consciousness. And you will see that the more you release, the more you're able to move forward into every level of awareness of good God has for you. And that's that's our desire, friends, to move into that yeah, and and if you're if you're listening to this and maybe it's March or July, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, right. Your your new year can start 
today. Absolutely true. And, and who knows? Maybe you have your own personal spiritual New Year's Eve. There you, you know, go. you can have your burning bowl. Just be safe, please. You know? <laughs> yes, I was going to say, please burn it outside. Yes, yes, don't do it. If you live in a high-rise apartment, how about not doing that? But uh, your new year can can start today. It does. If Absolutely you're listening true. to this and it's no longer New Year's Eve, that's that's okay. Right, and I want to mention too that beginning in January, uh, we're doing uh, an incredible series called Dream Big: Spiritual Goal Setting, and it's going to be a four week. Um, Sunday and Wednesday series at CCU Orlando, and then we'll continue on Wednesdays in February even. And that's carrying over into the podcast, right? And that'll carry over into the podcast as well. So we, you, uh, every aspect in January will be on that topic because, again, that's the energy coming in. There's a lot of energy with what do we want to do, what do we want to be, and we want to live life from the highest possible perspective. And the way I teach uh, goal setting is just that. We we go to God first uh, rather than all the ego stuff and, um, and look to God for the highest view possible. So our prayer for you this day, friends, is to forgive, release, let go, move on. So uh, we're praying with you and for you as we do our own spiritual process as well. We uplift you, we support you on the journey, and we thank you so much for joining us. And we really appreciate when you take the time to let your friends know about this, because number one, it helps us get the message out, but just as importantly, it will be someone you can talk about these spiritual principles with to receive support on your journey, uh, who's uh, you know right there in your life every day. So we bless you on the journey. We thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for making 2018 a great, great year for our podcast channel and many blessings. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey presented by CCU Orlando and Aikens Counseling Center here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. This channel is made possible through the continued support of our angel patrons, Dove Borland, Angela Martinez, Peter Gibson, Paul Caswell, and Two Spirits Health Services, along with our partner patrons, CCU Orlando and Aikens Counseling Center. If you would like to help be a part of bringing shows like this and other programs to the channel, please consider becoming a patron. For information, episode show notes, and details about our other shows on the channel, head over to experienceofthesoul.com. And if you enjoyed this program, you can help spread the word by leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, or the podcast platform of your choice. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2018, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Shannon Croft and used with permission. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.